Hey lovelies, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lovely Channel. Today I am sharing with you a Bible study with me. So I just wanna share with you guys kind of what I've been doing for my Bible study most recently and you can kind of come along and do it with me if you want to. Um, I did post a quiet time routine, like an updated quiet time routine a few weeks ago. So this is what, like for the Bible portion, what I've been doing actually just for the past week, um, I've just started doing this. If you enjoy faith content like this, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see more like this on my channel. And if you're not already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, that way you'll never miss a video. So I was telling you guys about my uh, quiet time morning routine that I like to do. And again, you can go check out that video. I'll have it linked below so you can kind of see an overview of what like my whole quiet time normally looks like. So I would normally be doing this whole thing a little bit earlier in the day. Um, I wouldn't even be dressed yet, <laughs> I'd be in my pajamas. Um, and I usually do this after River and I have breakfast. I'll read River a um, story from his Bible and then I'll sit down and do my quiet time routine. Um, but I waited to do this a little bit later today just cause I wanted to get ready and stuff for this video. So. Um, we're just going to be doing the Bible study portion. So literally probably just like the past week, maybe not even fully a week yet. Uh, my husband and I have started doing this new thing and my husband's the one that heard about it. He's been listening to a lot of John MacArthur lately and I believe he got this idea from him. Um, but it's to take one book of the Bible at a time and keep rereading that book of the Bible over a whole month. And this idea is really cool because he was saying the whole idea behind it is that you really get to know that book of the Bible. You know where certain passages of scripture are at within that book when you're reading it kind of in bigger chunks, but over and over again. You really just become familiar with that book of the Bible and what is in there. You also will gain so much context from reading a whole book of scripture over and over again. I think going verse by verse and dissecting scripture like that has great value in it. I love doing that, but this is just something new that we're trying and I love the idea behind it. So we've actually have both separately, like on our own in our own study times have been reading First John and it's five uh, chapters. Um, my husband's been doing a good job of reading like the whole book like every day. I usually only get to read like maybe two or three chapters a day. So I'll just kind of split it up, you know, and then but then keep starting over and rereading it once I finish the last chapter. So um, today I'm going to be reading chapters one and two, at least trying to read the chapters one and two. Sometimes it's a little harder when you're a mama of littles. Um, any little portion of scripture you get is valuable so but i also i lately have been reading scripture out loud when i'm reading i just feel like it really helps me to concentrate on reading it and then also if my son happens to be listening he's hearing the word of god as well so um i like to read it out loud so i'm going to do that here but before i read the scripture I did want to share with you guys my Bible. I always like sharing my Bible because I get questions about it all the time. Um, but this is the ESV journaling um, two column Bible. It's in natural leather. They actually don't make this exact Bible anymore, sadly. At least I don't believe they do. If I can find it somewhere, I will. But I think they haven't been selling this for quite some time. However, they do sell this one, which is really similar. Similar. This is one of my husband's Bibles. Um, this is also a natural leather Bible, but it just has the strap and flap on it. Um, it's still ESV. Oh, I had it upside down. <laughs> it's still ESV, and it's a journaling Bible as well, so you get the columns where you can take notes, but this one is a single column. Um, so the scripture just goes right across rather than having two columns. See, I'll show you the difference. This mine has, see how mine has two columns over here. Um, but I think they make this in a double column too. And there's a few different sizes that you can get, I believe as well. Um, so I'll have this link linked below and any other similar ones I find. Um, but if you are new to studying scripture, um, and you're looking for a Bible, I really recommend you going to a Bible bookstore and checking out different translations. Like actually try like going to certain passages 
different passages and reading it and seeing what is most understandable for you because i know um, for a lot of people esv is great like that's my personal favorite but if you're looking for something that's just super beginner friendly um and really really easy to read like it's just very readable um nlt is a great translation so i have an nlt version right here um as well this is just the nlt illustrated study bible i think this i think we have a review on this bible on our channel and over time you know after using it and stuff i love this translation the nlt um study notes are just kind of okay in my opinion <laughs> My favorite study notes are probably the ESV study Bible. If you're looking for notes just to help you with studying and stuff, that's probably one of my favorites. Um, we also like the Chuck Swindoll study Bible. Any of the ones I'm talking about, again, I'll have linked below if you're looking for a good Bible for you or someone else in your life. So, um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into reading the scripture. And before I do, I always like to just ask God to reveal his word to me and help me to understand it. So, dear Heavenly Father, I just pray that um, you would open my heart, my mind, and my eyes to your word, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would guide me as I read your word. Help me to understand it um, and do what it says. I pray I would grow closer to you and be more like you and just fall more in love with you, God. Pray this in Jesus name amen okay so first John chapter 1 that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you so that you, may, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Beloved, I am writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. At the same time, it is a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother 
is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I am writing to you little children because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you young men because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you children because you know the father. I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore we know that it is the last hour. Wait, therefore we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. But you've been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. Wow. I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us, eternal life. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. Yeah. But the anointing that you received from him abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. And now little children abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. And then it continues on to chapter three, which I really want to keep reading, but I'm going to stop right now. Um, but this is just, it's crazy how relevant this is to today, especially, I mean, I think this is something that's going around the whole world right now, but especially in the United States, it's just crazy. Uh, Brylan and I were just having a conversation about this this morning, but about how there's all these I, at least for us growing up in the church, we both grew up in Christian homes and grew up in the church. And there are so many uh, of what would have been considered trusted teachers and pastors back then that are advocating for things or agreeing with things that are just completely contrary to scripture today. And I feel like we're seeing this huge um, kind of like seduction of the church or at least of people who have claimed to be part of the body of christ and maybe never were so it's just really interesting um reading this you get sound doctrine and also just reading it in a big chunk like this is just seeing the context of um what early christians were dealing with and how it's the same kind of things we're dealing with today in our current culture and world.
the way we can love Christ and know that we are a part of him is by keeping his commandments. Like that's just a part of it. Today, so many people want to say things aren't sin, even though they are clearly according to scripture in the name of love. But when we read the word of God, we know that love is truth. It's speaking the truth. That's what true love is. And I think a lot of these words get twisted around in worldly definitions, but when we look at the biblical definitions of things, we can see what those words actually mean and how they are to be lived out in the Christian walk and in our life. And even this part, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Like <laughs> John is just, making it very clear here who is of God, who who is born again, who is in Jesus, and who is not. He's made it very, very, very um, strong and clear. And that's what I love about reading God's word is it brings truth and it makes things clear. It's not confusing. Confusing. We can go out into the world and you hear all different kinds of things and it can bring confusion because there's so many different truths. But there's really only one truth and that comes from the word of God. And then even, <laughs> I was talking to Bri about this because um, this keeps standing out to me. It's interesting how we've been in the last days since Jesus ascended into heaven after he rose again from the dead he appeared to the disciples and many other people and then he ascended into heaven we've been in the last days since then but john here says children it is the last hour and as you have heard the antichrist is coming so now many antichrists have come it's just interesting how he refers to it the last hour and this was how long ago how long ago was this written okay so so around 2,000 years ago, this was written, and he called it the last hour. So I told Brian, I'm like, I feel like we're in the last minute, <laughs> but I don't know. And then even how he talks about here, how when we are in Christ, we have knowledge through the Holy Spirit. We can read and discern, um, we can read his word and discern the things that, different teachings that are coming at us. And we don't have to be taught, it's not saying, to not be taught but we don't have to be taught because we have knowledge through god's word right here and through the power of his holy spirit um in using discernment being careful about what we hear and what we proclaim as truth because there's lots of different teachings out there there's a lot of deceiving teacher teachers out there that sound good but when you really look at it it is not scriptural it is not truth so um, this has just been really encouraging to read and I know for myself when I'm in God's word and I'm reading stuff like this it just builds me up and knowing that okay I can use discernment and God has given me discernment and he has truth here that I can always go back to and fall back on so um, I hope that encourages you today too um, but I also um, that's it for this Bible study portion but I also wanted to just share with you real quick, I talked about this in my last faith video, or two faith videos ago actually, um, but I do have a Advent 14 day Bible reading plan printable that you can buy on Etsy, it's only $1.99. Um, and if you don't want to buy it, if you don't want to have a printout, I will be sharing the daily readings on my Instagram page so you can follow me over there if you want to as well. I'll have both this linked below and my Instagram linked below so you can check that out. But this is basically 14 days, two weeks. So we're gonna start it the two weeks before Christmas. But it walks you through prophecy of Jesus's birth in the Old Testament. Um, we read Jesus's birth story, a couple different accounts of it. And then um, also a little bit about his life, death and resurrection because that's the whole purpose of why Jesus was born as a baby. So we read about that. And then we also read about uh, prophecy of his second coming and revelation something that we have to look forward to as believers because this season is all about celebrating Jesus's birth and um, with expectancy and an excitement um, but it's also a time where we 
reflect and remember that Jesus is coming again and we look forward with expectancy to his second coming. So um, that's basically what this reading plan is all about. The passages are very doable. So if you wanna check that out, I'll have it linked below. But thank you so much for studying God's word with me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, again, give it a thumbs up. Um, let me know in the comments below if there's any specific passages you wanna to read together or whatever, we could do that. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.